Hey there. I mentioned the other day when I showed you the sign out in the uh, at the cabin that I had bought something else at that place and I would show you when I went to pick it up in. Well, here it is. Now, the tongue on it and hitch is for a, a quad, like a ball hitch, but I will just build another one of these with a hitch for the skidoo. Now, this is one solid built dog sled type snowmobile sleigh. Double Teflon runners. It looks, the wood looks like birch. Looks like it's all made out of birch. It's pretty good wood, but man, that is one solid looking sled. I mean, I don't, well, I guess it might be practical for trapping. I could build a box that would fit right in there. Um, it was kind of cool if I wanted to have, if somebody wanted to come along and they could ride on the back runners like this. Like a dog sled. I'd have to put some better hand grips on here though. And it is built by, uh, the guy said, built by a fella in Russell, Manitoba called the Johnson Sled. I don't know if that's just the guy that owned it before this name or the, the guy that actually built them. But I got a heck of a deal on this thing. Yeah, paid $325. And I can hardly imagine what it would cost brand new because if you go over here, you know, that's their big plastic sleigh is $400 sleigh. These old, these are the old sleighs I used to use, toboggans. Um, totems made by Scott Canoe Company out of Ontario, but these things are both in severe need of repair. I gotta take the runners off and get fiberglass all through here. This sleigh here I've had since Good Lord, I'm gonna guess 1985 maybe, and the other one a couple of years later. This one here is just very heavy to drag around everywhere. So I bought that smaller one for when I didn't have such a big load to, to worry about. But they're both in some need of some repairs. But you'd think, of course, after 30 years of pulling them through the bush, they're bound to need some repair. So anyways, but that sled's pretty cool. Just thought I'd show you that while I'm uh, out here. I'm gonna go weld up uh, the roof flashing for my stove pipe now. I cut it out earlier. I'll uh, turn the camera back on when I get over there. There's the house. And there's that stupid mangy dog of my wife's. Ooh, I don't like that thing. And he's hiding there on the pr for a reason. He won't come near me. Morning, everybody. Okay, we're back at the camp with another load of stuff. Got some bricks for my underneath my wood stove. I brought in a spare. Looks like I might as well get rid of that since there's only one left there. Um, this is going to be a spare bed that's just going to st stand up in the corner and uh, for in case I ever have a visitor. I'm also going to take the advice of a couple, well several of you guys and build a, a foldable bunk bed that just folds up against the wall. Got my roof flashing. Got all the stuff in my pack sack for the drain for the sinks. Oh, by the way, too, I wanted to tell you. Remember that uh, antique place that I was at got that sign? The Gravenhurst sign right up there and that nice uh, sleigh. I got this pack sack. When I went back to pick up the sleigh, I just noticed this thing sitting in the corner. 
and I picked it up and it is, I mean, not in perfect shape, but it's so close. You know, there's just a little bit of surface cracking on this one leather shoulder strap. But this is a, a Woods number one. You know, I have two of them that you've noticed. I bought a brand new one. It's not called the Woods number one anymore, but this is the uh, old style. Still got your trump line on it. And uh, $20. That's an astronomical good price I mean I paid uh, like I don't know somewhere in the $200 mark for the one I have at home um, and the other two that I have you know I think I mentioned before that I bought one when I was 20 years old and the other one when I was maybe 25 and I the only thing I've done in on the one is replace these shoulder straps and the other one I have to now because last year I I broke one of them, so I'll have to get them replaced too. But you know, I've had a little bit of re-sewing or patchwork put on the on the canvas, and that's uh, but awesome, twenty dollars. And here's my log splitting tire. So that over there. Oh, and what a dummy! Well, I hope that's all he did was. I can't believe I left the garbage sitting outside. That's not something I normally do. But it'll come out, well that's probably why, because I was planning on taking it out with me. And I just walked away and forgot it. Okay, there's my log splitting rock. My log splitting tire goes right there. And just you know, show you what this is all about. If I can level this camera off good enough. doesn't go flying everywhere and also this is you need with the rock on the bottom if you're using a log you know I mean you can still use it so that you don't uh, get the wood falling everywhere but this stops the tire stops the axe from going down all the way into the and hitting the rock and you just and it's really nice for somebody with a sore back because you don't have so far to bend over to pick up your split wood after. There you go. That's what the tiger's for. Alrighty, well, that's good. It doesn't look like Mr. Bear tried to climb up anywhere. But that's the key again, do not leave any garbage. Inside the cabin where he can, or food that he can smell. So. Or he probably would have just gone in there. Get another garbage bag. Take that out of there. All right, everything's intact. It's a good day. I just want to show you guys something too. Here's uh, when I was doing all the chinking with that flower stuff, all the little pieces that I fell up, dropped on the ground. This is what mice love to do. They collect it and stuff it in your shoes. 
one good thing, they cleaned up the floor, I guess. But... I brought out some mouse traps last time and I set a... I think I set three. Here's one. Yeah. They've invaded already. Here's two. Okay, so these are your red back voles. Martin's number one food. You see, I mean, short tail, lighter belly, but you see the rusty red color on the back. That's two of them. Now the third trap is not where I put it. And these are not the guys you have to worry about the uh, hantavirus. That's generally your, well, they tell you to stay away from all mouse nests, but there's never been a case, I looked it up, um, that they can prove that it came, hantavirus came from anything other than a, a white-footed deer mouse. And those are the, the cute little guys with the big round ears. And But now I gotta look for the other mouse trap. I had it set right over there and it's gone. So I'm gonna have to move some stuff because I don't need to have rotting mice in my cabin. And I'll get them set. Yeah, it doesn't take them long to invade. I mean, as soon as I get the all those holes completely plugged in anything around the door, it should slow them down somewhat. And, of course, this here doesn't help stopping them. Although, I'm not sure the red-back holes climb very well. White-footed deer mice, I've seen them go right up a, a smooth pole like that, straight up. They just go around and around and around, working their way up. But I've never seen a red-back wolf climbing, so... Anywho, I'll look around for that other trap, and... I've got some coffee water going here. Chewing little pods of spruce seeds off, dropping them, and then they'll go and collect them later. <laughs> Hard to keep on with the wind moving the trees like that. Hey guys, I'm up on the roof. Remember I told you when I was putting the roof up here, or the sheet metal, that it would be a lot easier if you know in advance where you're going to put your stove pipe and you just install it like that. So, anyways, I've got the hole through here. You see straight down into the stove. What I'm going to do, instead of trying to slide the front end under the metal and then the back end on top, and uh, hammering down all these ridges because I've never installed one of these in a metal roof before other than the one at my house which is a totally different setup it's always you know out in the bush I've always installed them over shingles which is much much easier you don't have to worry about these ridges um, and anyways I'm gonna screw this thing down and then I'm just gonna get another sheet of tin to go under here and over top of this, right up to there. There will be no water comes down in there at all. And I'm going to put that spray foam under the whole thing all the way around. And of course I have to get my chimney cap on there later. So anyways, I'm just going to screw this thing down and then put all these screws back in. As long as my battery doesn't run out. But I'll get as many screws in as I can and uh, go from there. 
then I got to go inside still and trim the wood with the chainsaw because this little saw I bought is a piece of crap. Look at that. Brand new $19 saw. Cuts like a son of a gun, but that is one screwy thin blade. But that's my own fault for trying to do something it's not meant to do. So, anyways, I'll screw these down and we'll go inside and uh, get that wood braced up. Yeah, I got them all screwed down. I'll bring a piece of tin in with me next time to put under the roof with the peak flashing and on top of the stovepipe flashing. And that'll keep any water from running in there. Not to mention the foam and caulking or whatever else I put on roofing tire, who knows. But you know some of the guys wanted to mention about a panoramic view from on top of the roof here. So there's the trail I come in on. Here's my old trail. I'll still use that one. It's a big, good skidoo trail. There's one, I don't have to worry about that hill. There's a pile of old rotten wood and brush that needs to be burnt. That cleaned up there. That's one, there's one, two, three, four, five trees that need to be cut up for firewood. Um, trees taken down. One, two, three. That one, if I get a real, if it gets a real bad northwest wind. It's gonna, or even a west wind, because that's straight out of the west right there. So that tree with a west wind, with those branches, it'll, if it breaks off, it's gonna come straight down this way probably. This one down, that one down, that one. And then the dead one behind it. That big spruce will stay there. It's, yeah, I like it. It wants to take out my cabin. I'll just go build another one. Um, okay, so panoramic view, winter trail in, I'm on a nice rise here about 40 feet above the rest of the bush, got a lowland area there, jack pine, jack pine, okay now we're pointing straight north here. And that's where the river's just about 200 feet over, no, maybe 300 feet over there, 100 yards or so. All the way around to the bridge. To the trail, the quad trail I've been coming in on. The river down there. 100 feet away. And back here. There. Panoramic. Okay, so now I'm going to go in and get this stove hooked up. And then do the plumbing for the sink. Okay, I'm just going to have a bite to eat before I go down and trim them boards off the do bridge down there because I need them to brace up my kitchen countertop here but I started inserting there and of course my battery died on the second drill hole through there so I'm just having some chili and some toast get at her. Okay, see so you can see the sides of it is now are now smoking, burning that protective coating off of it. You can see where it's it's burnt off part way down. And, uh, once that's all gone, that's just a, a coating to stop it from rusting. Uh, you know, you get in storage and stuff like that so you don't end up buying a 
stove that's all rusted. Alrighty. Alrighty. It's time to go. That's still cleaned up somewhat. I've got my wood rack put in. There's enough room for right here. That's where my bed's going to be. And over here will be there's a fold up bunk. I just got to cut that shelf off right there by the wire. Cut that piece off so that'll give me room to fold up a and probably bunk there and maybe another one up higher that will like the end of it will be above my bed somewhat so just for in case I get visitors and this way I can just if I hear a noise in the morning I can just sit up in my bed look out the window and see what's happening in the world. And I can also just now there's going to be about two feet of space right here. Okay, so there's going to be about two feet of space from the end of the bed, 18 inches, two feet. So what I'm going to do is that extra chunk of foam I have there, I'll just double it up. And whenever I want to throw wood in, I'll just lay it on the floor here. I'll just drop the wood through the window. You know, maybe 20 pieces or so onto the ground, onto the foam there. Then come in and stack them up. Saves carrying. Like I said, trust a lazy man to figure out the easiest way to do something. So, anyhow, I am off to the races. I, I didn't get any chinking done this trip, well, because I wasn't overnight, but when I come back I will get the rest of this chinking done down here. The bottom log needs to be done in the second log. And then I can uh, pile wood in there. And then I can get the rest of the stuff done on the next overnight trip and then get this big tub of sawdust out of here. Get everything put away. And I gotta bring my big mouse trap too. Because I'm sure I'll have four in these out of these four traps next time I come in. And I gotta remember to take these two batteries here. I don't know if you can see them. Both my batteries are dead. I, of course, forgot the one last time I was here to recharge it. But anyways, we'll see you next trip or on the way out if I see anything. Alrighty, keep your boots dry, boys. Hey guys, just uh, at home here. And I'm in my office. And there is Mr. Bear. I think he's mowing down on some regrowth canola there. It looks a little blurry. He's about 300 yards from my house. He's just looking up now because there's a vehicle going by on the road. There, he just stood up to look at it.
You know, he's running right up towards the house now. He's going to head into the patch of bush right beside the house. Little goober. Gone. Oh no, he's right there still. Yeah. 